Hey everybody, I'm Tim Brzezinski and I'm excited to show you uh, to start part two of modeling in 3D with GeoGebra 3D and augmented reality. Last screencast we made this, all right, a very simple, solid, rectangular prism. And today we're going to take our construction that we made yesterday and we are going to build onto it quickly to make this composite solid right over here. Okay, and I know the images are inverted, but you can see, all right. So we're going to open up that, uh, that, that construction yesterday. I'm going to try to go as quickly as I can because I want to respect your time. So let's get started. Go to screen share. And we're going to rock and roll. Now, the, the necessary screencast that, uh, resources that you see are in the YouTube description right below here. Um, yesterday, I'm sorry, on Friday, or the last time we, we met, we actually, the video is right here, uh, 3D modeling with AR part one. This was what it was, okay? And to get you started, we made this and kind of looks like this right here. So we're gonna open this in a new file, okay? So it's important right now that you are logged into GeoGebra if you're not. So if you don't have an account, I would recommend just watching this and then just you know going back to it once this YouTube Live is over. But again, you make your own decisions there. But see, this is the GeoGebra resource upon which we wanna build and we're gonna put that second block, that second rectangular prism on there uh, as well. So here's what we do. To take any GeoGebra construction that you made previously, open it up, you know, go to the resource itself there that you made. Whenever you save a graph, it creates a resource. It just does. So this is what I have right here. But um, what you do is go to the upper right corner here, the snowman, three dots, click on it, and go to open in app. And what that does is it literally creates a clone copy of the construction that you have there with all the tools at your disposal. Okay, we're going to build on this right here. Uh, for some reason, I guess I'm not signed in there. So let me sign in quickly. That was unexpected. I'll just do it through Google. Give me a second. My bad. There we go. Buckshot. All right. So um, I'm going to hold the shift key down. If you hold down shift, uh, and you can actually, uh, holding down shift will actually help you bring it more over here to the left so you can see it. We'll bring it closer to the, the tab here. Okay. So again, I want to show you what I have here at the same time. So let me go move this. And then let me put on this uh, camera here. One second. Again, our goal is to build this. Let me get the camera, camera. All right. So you see here, right, we have that block, that rectangular prism that's 9 and 8 tenths by 19 and 65 hundredths, and then up here the depth of 4 and 65 hundredths right there. But next to it, we're going to put a rectangular prism that's half the height has the same, and has the same base in the same uh, width or depth, or whatever you want to call it, okay? So that's what we're going to add on to right over here. So let me just put this down for a quick second. I'm going to I'll hold down the shift key and just bring this over so it's kind of in, in view here, so it's easy to see. Now, um, with that said, everything here, uh, everything that we made here is listed in this view right over, right over here, okay? So now what we're going to do is, uh, for the most part here, we're going to take this. Now, I know that what I have to put over here, I have to put a point here perhaps that's half the height up. Now up here, we know that's a Z coordinate of 19 and 65 hundredths. So over here, I gotta simply put a point that's maybe half the height. Okay, I could do that now. Or let's talk about transformational geometry perhaps. So think of all the, so let's go to the tool palette here for a second and let's look, go to more. Let's go down a little bit to where it says transform. Okay, now the one of the first transformations kids learn is the translation by vector tool, right? But before we translate by vector, we should make a vector about which we're going to translate. So up here in the lines and polygons tools, a uh, uh, subset, I should say, we have a vector tool right here. So let's click on it. Okay, and think about it. I'm going to translate. Again, there's several ways to do this, but I think one of the simplest ways is to have kids naturally work with that. I think it makes sense to translate that bottom rectangle over by that vector. I want to put it right next door, no overlap, right? So uh, we'll do that. Again, we'll hit the, um, whenever you use a tool, turn it off by hitting move again. And for this vector, I'm going to uh, show the label there. That label is called U, okay? And now, so, we think about it, I want to take this bottom rectangle, I'm just using my mouse to drag here a little, just to move around the white space around here. So what I'm going to do is go back down 
and uh, and have my students translate this by vector now. So I'll click on that translate by vector tool. Okay. Let's touch on the key is to touch on what you want to translate and then the vector itself afterwards. And there you go. And now again, turn the tool off. And you see that we just put that, we just translated that vector over. We just made literally this face right, this face right here. That's see that, that we're looking at right now. Okay. But now, how are we going to make the rest of this prism? Well, you know, we could have kids do the math and double nine and eight tenths, but we could also, couldn't we also simply translate the point as well? Right? I mean, we might as well just uh, work smart here, not hard. But again, it's up to you. We'll translate that point by that vector. We'll translate this point by that vector as well. Okay. And now, well, here's where I have to actually think for a second. I got to actually... You know, there's a couple ways I can go about doing this. I could have kids take two two different avenues here. I could have them plot at least two of these other points and then uh, pretty much, um, you know, go and uh, uh, make a translate, do some translating again. Or, one second, sorry about that. So let's actually let's actually do just that. So I'm so think about it. What would the coordinates of the point right here have to be? Well, the x coordinate would have to be nine and eight tenths, right? The y coordinate would be zero, and then the z coordinate would be whatever half of 19 and 65 hundredths is. So I'll just put 19.65 divided by two. I don't know, why should I do the math if Joe's would do it for me, right? There you go. All right, and then now I can also type in um, what? Nine, uh, nine and eight tenths, uh, and then what? Go over y, four and 65 hundredths. So I'm gonna put one right above here, right? And then uh, 19 and 65 hundredths divided by two, and then enter. All right, I, I could have also made this vector from here to here and then translated that by a vector. Again, different avenues I could take. Now, I noticed that in the last file, I classified it, I organized all these objects by type, but I think it's easier when you're constructing to, con to organize it by construction order. So we're gonna go here to this gear. Go to settings, uh, all right? Go to that funky looking cubic symbol there. And where it says sort by, let's do construction order. So that is see how this gives us everything we made in order from when we started till now. All right. So what other options are there? Well, I know that I could go back to my translate by vector tool and then just touch on J and then the vector U. And then I could touch on I and then the vector U. Right. And there, there they are. Okay. Another method I could also use. All right. And I'll show you this. Um, some of you may be interested in this approach. Uh, is another tool that GeoGebra has called the Prism tool, or Extrude to Prism, right here. It's under the Solids uh, category, Extrude to Prism. What this tool allows you to do is basically choose any any uh, polygon or circle for a base or something, and then just you type in the height, and then it'll make a prism. Okay, uh, right prism, if you will. So Extrude to Prism. Check this out. See, it says it tells you what to do. So I select polygon. And I'll type in the height of 19 and 6500 divided by two, and see, there you go. I just made the prism right there. The other, way, the other, the other means that which I could have done is I could have simply just, you know, made the rectangular faces using the polygon tool that I showed you last time. You know what I mean? Uh, but again, this uh, is another way we could uh, we could do just this right here. So now we have what we need. Now we're ready to test an augmented reality. But first. People ask me all the time, hey, Tim, how do you clean these things up so fast? I mean, your constructions look neat and everything is not, you know, this looks messy to me and I don't want my students to have this. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know. Your call. But whenever I want to clean up a file, I'll show you this quickly. I go back to my settings, go back to the cubic, and I always sort it by type. Okay. Um, so going here, so all the edges, all the segments are together, all the polygons are together, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch on segment here. I just clicked on the word segment. I'm going to right click, go to settings, and under style, I like to make my segments all have uh, like thickness of three, which is sort of thin. And hidden line style is unchanged, which means it doesn't show the dashes. But you know, hidden line dashes, I don't know. That's just my 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 thing. You know, you 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 style it the way you want. There's no right or wrong here, right? So we got this going on. Also with the prism itself. Right. If we go to the polygons here for the quadrilaterals, I click on all the quads, right? Right click, settings, and then I'll go to style. I'll go to unchanged. You see everything nice, and I'll make the thickness for that three, the line thickness for the edges there. So it kind of cleans it up right there. 
Now for these, I know these have darker opacity, but for the, if I touch on it and I could just make it say whatever this one was, I can make it the same as that. Um, whatever the opacity for that is, I guess, um, it looks like it's around 40, but whatever. Um, I could just go all, all the quadrilaterals here itself and just make the opacity, uh, whatever, right click here. Sorry. What were we doing here? Um, let me get out of here. That's the trick. Yes. But uh, here, we could actually go here and make the opacity say, uh, oh, wait, it was darker because there's two of them showing there. That's why. Silly me. But regardless, um, again, that's just a thing you could you could fix, you know, on your own there. You can make it 25, whatever this opacity was, you know, um, looks like it was around, what, 40 or something. But regardless, you, you see what I mean there. So we're good to go. Now let's hide the labels for the points. Okay, so if I go to point, now I could just go right click on them and then settings, uncheck show label, they all disappear. Now I could also check show object and uncheck show object to make all the points disappear, right? And let me go down the vector U and make that go away. See how I cleaned it up pretty nicely, right? Looks kind of, uh, looks like the way I want it to look there. All right. So now what I do next before I check it out in AR is I have to save it. So now this is the way I want it. I go to here, I go to file, save. But now I'm gonna make it something new. This is called two block AR demo or something like that. Um, I'm just gonna call it, uh, let's say, um, test, uh, test blocks two or something like that. I don't know what to name it, but again, make it public for now. There's three options, public, share with link, private. Um, if you make it public, you can get it rather quickly. I would just say, just make it public, um, hit save. Saving it says, and then save successfully. Cool. So where is this file now? And how do I open it on my phone? That's the fun part. So go back here, we'll go to our GeoGebra page your GeoGebra profile there. If you go back to geogebra.org, go to where it says profile, you're logged in, and it's test blocks too. Again, we're not gonna look at it here. If I click on it to see it's there, it's a huge file. We could, you know, don't worry about that. But what you need are these digits right here, okay? So the, in this case, whenever you save a resource, GeoGebra always creates a code, like it gives it a signature, and that's the, the resource ID, you know, in the URL that you open it up there. So in my iPad, I'm going to open up 3D Calculator. Again, works on an Android, works on an iPhone. All right. But uh, I'm going to go here to uh, search. Okay, let me reload that again quickly. All right. Whoops, wrong one. Go to search. My bad. So VWE. There it is. So I'm going to go type in the search. Literally what I see there, VWE. It is case sensitive. Uh, v W E V Y B U I B D Q. Return. No, nope. hang on. Give it a second. Maybe I typed it wrong. V V W uh, E E V Y. That's what I messed up. E V Y B D Q. I could also try typing the title too. You know what I mean. Um, but that's uh, that. See it right there. I touch on it, and there it is. Now I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my two fingers, bring it closer to me here, and if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go turn on the light in my office because AR needs lights. That is so important. You need a good light source. All right. So now we just made this. Oh, we just made uh, this file here in GeoGebra, right? That's what we literally made, and now we're gonna test it in augmented reality to see how well it fits. I have the block still here on my desk. We'll be done in a minute. And um, see, this is the icing on the cake. This is the power of GeoGebra here. Just let me get my headphones back in. I apologize. I'll just take the headphones out. All right. So now, here's the test. So now we hit the AR button right here. Aim our device to the floor. Tap on that square that appears. There it is. And now let's uh, we can hide it by going over here. Let me just get rid of. Uh, let me just bring this over a little bit. So it's all right. Whatever. But you get what I'm saying there. So we got it, and then we'll put it there. Let's see how well we built this thing. Put it to the test here in augmented reality. Hide. Good on you. Here we go. That's the power of GeoGebra 3D with augmented reality. We could even jump inside, go explore. It's like, what? 
oh, go down, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? But you can go in. You could explore this from any angle. That's the power, okay, of GeoGebra 3D with augmented reality. We can even look at it here from a different perspective. See, it just fits really nicely. So um, that's kind of what we have going on right there. And for, uh, let's see, for tomorrow, all right, see, that's what we had finished making, I guess, right there. Now, for tomorrow, what we're going to do is make something that looks like this. Give me a second here. I'll show you. All right. Uh, we're going to take this same block, and we're going to make another composite salad, but this time we're going to differentiate for, say, kids who need more of a challenge, perhaps. All right. So here I have another block here. hope my kids don't mind me writing on this, but you have another block, all right, with uh, one of the edges matching up. Again, that bottom, that uh, edge there is 9 and 8 tenths, and so the, you know, they're 19 and 65 hundredths. But, of course, we could use Pythagorean theorem to get that hypotenuse, but we're going to actually make this in 3D right here. We're actually going to make a composite solid now where that face that's, like, serving as a hypotenuse is going to go here. And in doing so, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to learn how to use a couple new tools in the 3D, uh, in the 3D app that we haven't explored yet. So, uh, again, when, you're, uh, when the Einsteins in the class are kind of bored with making the simple stuff, you give them a challenge like this. We're going to do that tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. I haven't created the YouTube live link yet, but I will later today, and I'll put it out on social media uh, later today So and put it in the playlist as well. So if you like what you're seeing here, feel free to subscribe. A lot more to come in the series here with modeling and GeoGebra 3D and augmented reality. Again, math is, math is everywhere. Math is fun. We're going to build so many models. We're, going to we're touching a lot of geometry here, but also coordinate and algebra, plotting uh, points. But uh, we're going to touch other uh, higher level courses as well within the curriculum. So thank you for watching. Have a great Monday, and we'll see you here tomorrow. Have a great day. And oops, where'd you go? All right, bye.